of 16 volumes in the series, 179 chapters total. Last time on my channel, when we read through the first part, I was left so confused. What the fuck was that? But a lot of you told me that I can't be judging that series without reading through this one. Is Tokyo Ghoul Re gonna answer all of my questions? Gonna make me like the series? Am I gonna think this is a masterpiece? Or was trading away my One Piece box sets for this? Not worth it. Volume one. Dude, is this even the same series? The art style and everything is completely different. I'm so confused already. God damn it. Ghouls. They appear human, but they have unique predatory organs. They can only survive by feeding on human flesh. They are humanity's natural enemy. And we, the CCG, are the only organization in the world that investigates and solves ghoul-related crime. How's that? That's perfect, Sasaki. So for a good portion of day one, I was hell-bent on this idea that Kaneki is Hayes Sasaki. Sasaki? Kaneki. What are we thinking? Nah, that's stupid. So like, I was reaching at everything, man. Every little connection I could make. He has an RC factor of 2,753. He has the highest one out of everybody. I was going for it. Look at this. So this character right here has information about the torso ghoul and says that they want a personal item from Sasaki, right? Which is a little weird. She wants something that like smells like him and it's not for her, it's for one of her models. The model being this, this guy right here. Now this guy, looks like the gourmet ghoul in the first series. I just feel like maybe the art style is a little different. That's why he doesn't exactly look like him. And it would make sense because the gourmet ghoul was obsessed with Kaneki. So maybe he wants to smell Sasaki because he knows that it is Kaneki. Or maybe I'm just reading too much of this. So confused. So the humans are able to use the ghoul's abilities now. Oh my fucking God. They want to hit a coffee shop up and the coffee shop is fucking called Re. Dude, shut the fuck up. This is the craziest fucking shit. This is insane. What? This is where that volume ends? Yomo, to Toka, and then Kaneki, right? Whoa. Whoa! I need that second volume right now. I'm really impressed with how fast I got hooked reading the second part. I was so curious to see what happened next. And look, we got some familiar faces. And what is this? What the hell? What, what is, what? I've been reading a little bit more throughout the story. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is Toka and it says that she's visiting someone. They're kind of in a hospital space right now. And I'm trying to think of who Toka could possibly visit. And the only one who really comes to mind would be Hide. What even happened to him? It was implied that Ken Kaneki ate him, but you know, I, I don't really believe that. All of these ghouls recognize Sasaki as being Ken Kaneki. So now I'm thinking about the meme panel. I was really obsessed with the idea of the meme panel and what it meant in the first section of the story. Now I'm starting to brainstorm. What if the meme panel is the moment that Sasaki reverts back to Ken Kaneki? Who knows? That's my thought process on this whole thing right now. Yeah, the meme panel, this one specifically, is what I'm really looking forward to in the story. I was so excited to see it in the last part. It wasn't there, so it has to be in this one. Anyway, Takizawa is a ghoul. What? Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna read today. I don't know where my head is at with the story. When I woke up, I started doing some reading and I was just gonna go until I saw something I wanted to talk about. I got through this much of the volume and I was like, wow, there is nothing I want to discuss on this YouTube channel. And then we got to Hinami defending Sasaki. And I was like, okay, this is pretty interesting. Maybe I should turn on the camera for this. But I was like, nah, this isn't really gonna go anywhere. And then Sasaki says something like, I'm not the person you knew. My body might be Ken Kaneki, but I'm Hayes Sasaki. He must have been a wonderful person for you to care that much about him. I don't care if I lose it. So give me the power to protect. And I was like, this is interesting. This is weird. So he's gonna turn into Ken Kaneki. God damn it. God fucking damn it. It's the meme panel. This is it. This is when that happens. Are you serious? Hey, Sasaki is Ken Kaneki. This is the meme panel. This is iconic. Why is this so iconic? The I'm a ghoul panel is way cooler. Hey, Sasaki is Ken Kaneki. I knew that shit from the start, bro. I guess that shit the moment this motherfucker appeared on screen. So is he gonna turn back into Hayes or is he just gonna stay as Ken Kaneki? And with that, we're finished with volume three. That was it. That was the meme panel. Oh man.
We're now on volume four of Tokyo Ghoul Re. The coffee shop group sent over Kaneki's old mask over to Sasaki. I like how different of a take this is. This is so ballsy to make your character forget who he was and become a completely different character in the second part of the series, just to be able to tell the investigator's side of things. It's really clever, but also how well is it gonna be in execution? I don't, I don't know. And ultimately he's not gonna stay Sasaki for the whole thing. He's gonna end up turning back into Ken Kaneki by the end of the series right what are you trying to pull off with this narrative this this is fucking insane so sasaki is talking to uda trying to figure out hey what's what's the deal with this mask bro and he's like yeah i did make that mask but i'm not the one that sent it to you now i'm curious who did maybe it's yomo anyway now sasaki wants to order a custom mask why so Sasaki and the gang are starting Operation Mask, where they start to infiltrate the ghouls. I still think this is one of the stupidest ideas ever, but they are getting some information about the different wards. So it's kind of annoying, but I kind of like this plot line only because look at this panel where she says that the ghoul that they talked to was actually a pretty nice person. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Next, Sasaki says that him trying to investigate the wards wasn't really good because they recognized him. They recognized his mask. Which I feel like should give you enough information to realize, oh fuck, like maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Okay, so one thing I am confused about, did Amon die? I don't think it was clear, at least if it was, I should remember it. It's Dr. Kano. This is confirming that Aman is dead. The gourmet and Sasaki are now having a conversation and Sasaki just straight up says, are you a ghoul? Intense, dude. Uh, so I'm, I was reading through volume five of Tokyo Gori and them saying repeatedly that Aman is dead and that Kaneki was the one that killed him. I was so fucking confused. I was like, really? Did that actually happen? Because uh, if you guys didn't watch the last video, when I got around to this volume, I, it was just confusion on all fronts so fucking confused at what the hell was going on so i just went through this volume again to check out how this story ended amon was killed his arm was sliced off by kaneki but he didn't die from kaneki's hands but kaneki thinks that he did it it was actually one of the other ghouls that seems to have killed him from the Algiri. He's the same one that also took down Takizawa. So Takizawa has now become the tea owl in the Algiri tree. So Aman is probably going to become a ghoul as well. Hi everyone, it's day four. The power just went out in my house. We are currently on book six of Tokyo Ghoul Re. I really, really like this manga cover. Even this right here, this red, there's something about this. Makes it look really cool. I don't like the fact that it's not the same for all of them. We left off in a pretty cool spot. I think that the, the owl king, the one-eyed king, one-eyed ghoul king is showing up. Uh, I think it's gonna be the daughter, but I don't know. We haven't gotten there. I think this is her, right? I swear this is her. Good night, Hayes. I'm done dreaming. What? Are, really? Is this for real? We're done with Hayes? Sasaki, Hayes, that's done? Okay, so now why isn't this panel? iconic when sasaki turns back into kaneki why isn't this one iconic why is the other one iconic i don't like the other one it's such a weird moment in the story who gives a fuck about that one i know i haven't really been talking about the ccg guys all that much because i didn't i really didn't think they were going to play a crazy role in the story but then as we were going through the volumes i was like huh maybe they are but i don't know none of them have really stood out to me enough to really talk about them much this whole time i've just kind of been waiting for kaneki to become Kaneki again because that just felt like the right direction for the story to go. So this is going to be probably a very pivotal moment for Yuri. I'm going to start paying attention to his character a little bit more. I think this is going to be definitely a turning point for him. Shirazu, I feel like I just never really saw the direction his character was going. I was wondering why he wasn't activating his shit. Looks like in the final moments he was able to, but he died. So I applaud the author for this final moment with him because I think this was really well written. But honestly, I don't know about the buildup. I just kind of found myself not caring. It seems like he's officially back. I, I think I'm starting to see where this is going. Game theory. Kaneki is now Kaneki. Sasaki is dead. Kaneki is going to continue to pretend being Sasaki. And he's going to try to change things. But now from the inside, working inside the CCG. This might look like he's killing the gourmet. I genuinely think he's saving him. Uh, dude, I am just full of bangers today. That is not at all what happened. He just died. The gourmet just died. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so Toka, Toka and Yomo are here. 
and Kaneki's here. Never mind, we are gaming out here. Master Shu is not dead. If Kaneki wanted you dead, I think he would have killed you. Yes. Yes, I'm starting to pick up what this thing is putting down. What is Kaneki's plan in all this though? Kaneki is now actually pretending to be Hei Sasaki. My one question though is, where is Hide? Where is that man? Is he actually dead? No, they're probably going to bring him in towards the end of the story. I'm supposed to think he's dead, but then actually this whole time, him and Kaneki came up with a plan and now they're executing it and Hide is doing stuff behind the scenes. I bet you that's what's going on because an off-screen death is not a proper death. That motherfucker is out there somewhere. What is San Takatsuki's real name? She hasn't made that public, although I do enjoy her work. She is currently suspected of being a ghoul. Is San Ta... Was that the author's name that Kaneki really enjoyed that just started leaking a bunch of shit at the end of the series wait a, a brilliant novelist who is popular both as a person and a writer wait a fucking minute wait a fucking minute oh my god you little i'm looking through volume 12 of tokyo ghoul what's this an inspection gate it scans for ghoul cells why wouldn't she have been nervous about this though but Ken Kaneki is able to freely walk through this, and she was too, and that's because she's a one-eyed ghoul, half human, half ghoul, just like Ken Kaneki, and you know what? Ken Kaneki never triggered one of these, so why should she? And that's why she knows so much information about the ins and outs of the fucking ghoul society. You little fucker. Wow. I was wondering why the author just randomly showed up in the previous part. I thought it was so stupid. I was like, why would you have this character show up at the very end just to give information to Aman? It just felt genuinely like the author wrote himself into a corner and then he was trying to get out of it by doing this stupid plot line. But motherfucker, I'm the idiot. We're nearing the end of the volume. Before I make the announcement of my next book, I would like to say a few words about myself. I am a ghoul. Oh. Oh, my final book is dedicated to my fellow ghouls who are alone, born into the wrong world with the same craving for flesh and blood as me. Whoa, fuck. And with that, we have just finished book six. We still have this much of the story left. I've been doing homework for the last like two, three hours. And all I was thinking about was just continuing this Tokyo Ghoul series. So the last volume ended crazy. So I wanna see what happens. Okay, we're finding out so much information. First of all, the clowns work for Kano, Dr. Kano. And Dr. Kano has been telling them to go around and do all this mischief. It seems like there's another ghoul that is a part of the CCG. It is him and he is one of the clowns, but nobody actually knows who the one-eyed king truly is, which now I'm confused because I thought it was Mr. Yoshimura, but also they just mentioned in this conversation that Ito Yoshimura killed Yoshimura in the first part, which now I'm like, fuck, did that really happen? I thought she saved him because all that it said was, hi, dad. And then I swear we don't see anything else. Kaneki secretly has a plan that he wants to execute for all of this. Before Ito goes, she wants to try to help out, but in return, I need you to grant me a wish kill the one-eyed king i don't know what that means and frankly i don't either what does that mean who is the one-eyed king dude is it not mr yoshimura is it yomo i don't know unless they just want to introduce a new character out of nowhere and be like oh he was the one-eyed king it would have to be yomo they're saving something for that character uh, i don't know yeah we're just gonna stop right there for today and now check this out we're officially locking in for the next 36 hours. We are going to be reading right now, and then we're just gonna be reading the rest of the story tomorrow as well. We're entering into the next major arc right now. They're about to ambush the Aogiri. So, theories, what are we gonna get revealed in this section? Honestly, we might see Amon. I feel like the ghoul version of Amon is gonna show up right now. This is badass. This is really badass. You guys have been telling me in the comments that they messed up the Tokyo Ghoul anime. I wish they didn't because 
This would be sick. This is the grossest thing that has been drawn so far in this series. The combination of these two panels. This is Hinami activating her co Kagane, I think it is. That shit doesn't look right. The fact that they paired it up with this manga panel also doesn't look right. That, dude, that's fucking gross. We just got some info on the fact that Yomo is actually Toka's uncle. I'm, what? Okay, so now I'm not really thinking that Yomo is the one-eyed king. I think the story is just probably about, oh, dude, honestly, I'm just kind of stupid. Didn't Ito in the first Tokyo Ghoul manga say that she wanted to write a story about ghouls and then that's when she started taking an interest in Kaneki. The King Beiran guy that she wrote the ghoul story about is probably just a story about Kaneki. And this is, we're just watching Kaneki grow and become capable of being the one-eyed king. That's probably what's going on right now. Anyway, now we're on chapter 76 entitled Doubt. Kaneki versus Arima. Let's see, is Kaneki gonna beat him? Beaten, going back on everything I chose, repeating the same mistakes, I'm worthless, uncool, pathetic. Okay, stop the music. Why didn't anyone tell me that this was gonna be the coolest fight in the entire, like, are you serious? I was going into this with zero expectations. I was just like, okay, rematch, whatever. But what? This fight is such a pivotal part of the series. Just, it just appeared like that. You have no intent of killing me. I've lost then 18 years. I've been an investigator for 18 years. Not once have I been at loss against an enemy until now. I'll ask you one last time. You're certain you have no intention of killing me. My decision will not change. All right. What? Is that real? What are you doing? Bro just killed himself. The head of the CCG has been a ghoul this entire time. He's a clown as well. But what does that even mean? This is like the enemies to lovers trope. You are my teacher and my father. I was blessed. I don't know, man. This guy, like, he killed you. In several languages, including Maltese, Ray means king. What the fuck does that even mean? Now we're on volume nine. This looks like it's fucking guts. Takuzawa, what do you want? Aman. Oh, dude, I'm such a gamer. This should be the meme panel. Are you fucking kidding me? This is way better. So I was right. Aman is actually alive. That's sick. Also, Mado got shot. Also, we're on volume 10. We're currently on chapter 99. Where is this series going? I have so many questions. Is he they really dead? Will Amon meet his father? Kaneki and Amon, are they gonna team up? Where's the Toka and Kaneki plotline going? Will Yuri have the courage to fight Kaneki? Will this have a good ending? What is Yomo's role in all of this? What are the clown's motives? Who is going to die in the series? Will Kaneki end racism? And most importantly of all, is Tokyo Ghoul peak? All this and more are gonna be learned today in the Tennis YouTube channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Only if you like the video. We're, we're right now on volume 11. The last volume ended off with us seeing Amon in a, in a tube. I don't know, he's a test tube baby. Little baby. You have more things to finish, things only you can do. Sukiyama and the investigators, the guys from Cochilia, even Naki and his guys are doing this for you. Back at the hideout, Banjos, and I hate to say it, but even I'm relying on you. There's a ton of ghouls who have no choice but to rely on you. They're all doing what they can for you because they're counting on you. My sister's waiting for you too. You want to waste all of that on a sudden impulse? If so, then you really are a half-ass. Part of your job is letting things go, no matter how much it means to you. You have to make choices. Damn, that was so fucking cool. I didn't think I was gonna like Takizawa as much as I, I do. He's honestly such a cool character. Yeah. Investigator Amon's coming back. When you realize your future has gone to shit, all you have to do is live for somebody else. But things are ramping up. This dude is getting exactly what he wants. He's gonna be leader of the CCG. Nice. That is lit. We finally meet Rabbit. This is so cool. All these characters characters are starting to meet up with one another and they're joining the same team. Right now it's Toka and Amon who are gonna have a conversation. And then there's Hinami and Mado who, who will also probably have a conversation. Both parties were heavily impacted from that one night established early on in the first Tokyo Ghoul Mod. This is cool. So this guy just came into power for one day. It's been, it hasn't even been a day yet. It's been literally five minutes. And this dude is already doing shit with kids. Crazy. I patch if. A friend you thought you had lost came back to you. How would you feel about it? I'd be afraid. Afraid I'd lose them again. Shut the fuck up, dude. Shut the fuck up. There's a second meaning to all of this. I just know it's true. Amon is referring to Mado in this conversation, but in reality, this 
conversation it has a deeper meaning because it's about Kaneki and Hide. So I do think it's nice and it's touching the, the connection that Mado and Kaneki have with one another. I am just sad that all of this is just supposed to be implied because you know most of this relationship that's established between these two characters happened off screen and we're just supposed to be like yeah that makes sense what was it all for the time we wasted i can't even feel hatred i'm at a dead end there's no place for me to go place that's what i'd like to know you can go anywhere you want i'll be by your side don't look away this time okay now that that's adorable previously when they were gonna kiss i thought that shit was cringe as hell it's fine this time that's pretty nice. Are these two written out of the story now? It doesn't really seem like they wanted to partake in this. Are you a virgin? So are you? Oh my God, this is a for real question? There's actually no way. Is this really the direction the story is going in? I'd let you do it if you really have to. Bro, we about to get a sex scene? What the fuck is going on? Okay, taking a step back, this isn't really all too surprising. I feel like these two characters were set up from the very beginning to get with one another. What's crazy though is this. This motherfucker went from having no bitches to now two bitches. And with that, we're finished with volume 11. We're on volume 12. But like, okay, uh, like for real, for real, like are, are they are they gonna have sex? Oh my God, whoa. It's actually like, whoa, whoa. And it actually happens. And honestly, that was a really touching moment. That was really nice. Oh my God. See guys, Kaneki at the beginning of the story, he was a scrawny nobody. Uh, and now he has sex. There's hope for all of you. You just gotta almost get murdered, get tortured, uh, abandon a girl, have her miss you because of the fact that you abandoned her, eat your best friend, uh, and do a couple of other things as well. But then it'll work out for you. Dude. She's pregnant. Oh my God. So the baby's gonna be like three fourths. Dude, she's gonna fucking die. Ito's father, Yoshimura, was a ghoul and the mother was a human and she fucking died when she was making Ito. But Toka is a ghoul and Kaneki is like a half ghoul, half human. Toka technically doesn't die, right? Didn't they say earlier on that if you're having a human baby inside of you, your ghoul body just eats it and absorbs it? I don't think Toka's actually gonna die. Honestly, I really just think that we're gonna have a happy ending. I don't know. I actually don't see the possibility that this ends tragically, but he does say that his life is a tragedy. I feel like the cards are all being set up for this to be a bad ending, but I actually think we're gonna get a good one. We're now on volume 13. The anti-fun police show up, AKA the CCG, and they fight Kaneki and they take him down, which, damn it. This is such a cool moment. So Kaneki lost, and he's talking to all the other different versions of Kaneki that we have seen throughout the story or just has been a part of his childhood. And he's, he's just asking himself a bunch of what ifs. And then one Kaneki screams to the other, stop talking about what ifs, face reality, you punk. This is officially the turning point in the story when we start reaching the actual final arc. And with that, we're finished with volume 13. We're now on volume 14. This is getting so good. I feel like we're gonna get an ending this time and I'm so excited. Excited. So all of a sudden, a giant monster appeared and it's attacking Lego City. It's a giant fucking centipede. Turns out this monster centipede thing, it's actually Kaneki. Dude, so is this Hide? It is, right? It is. It is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pod racing. That's badass. Hide is back in the story. This guy kind of looks familiar. I was fucking right, dude. I was fucking right. Oh my God. The amount of correct predictions I've been getting with this series. Dude, it's kind of obvious. Honestly, I'm just following along with the story and thinking about what would make a more satisfying story. Like, come on, did we really think that Hide was gonna be dead? That's so cool though, that he's back. Even though Hide is back in the story though, I just feel like this next part of the story has a lot of ups and a lot of downs. He can't read his books, he can't drink coffee, he can't talk to his friends or his beloved wife. He can't even hold his child. Am I the only one who wants him to be happy? Now that I'm really thinking about this, I've just been going along with the story, accepting what it's been thrown at me. But like, are we really happy with the idea that Kaneki just turned into a giant centipede and now the power of friendship is going to go and free him? Is that really the direction the story is going? You're not saying we should partner up with ghouls. I am. At this point, I'd prefer that all of them to just die. I really hate this. I really hate that this happened. I don't like that the story is now relying on the power of friendship to be able to end ghoul racism. And let me explain why. This is a story with a really well-written narrative, super clever, a lot of plot twists. And the fact that we're now unifying 
these two factions against the common enemy and that's how the racism is solved is really stupid in my opinion and a little forced. Kaneki couldn't have done this unless the villains helped him. It's bullshit. What was even the point of it all? Kaneki doesn't even achieve anything here. It's it's lame. I would have rather had Kaneki after experiencing both sides step forth and give like a speech or something. Something super clever. Do something pretty clever to be able to unify these two. Not fucking this. And with that, we're finished with volume 14. Volume 15. Let's see what happens. I do really like this final conversation between Kaneki and Reese. This is fire. Kaneki finally coming to that conclusion of honestly, everything in my life is perfect the way it has been. I know I've suffered a lot. I know I've been tortured. I know I went through a lot of hurt, but I'm really happy with where my life ended up. And yeah, honestly, if you were to have given me the option to go down this route or to live a normal life, I probably would have chosen the normal life. But now being at the end of this road, heck to the no would I have done that. I love the fact that I'm a ghoul. I love the fact that I've met Toka and I love the fact that everything in my life has happened to me. It's great. I'm glad that I suffered. I'm glad that it made me change. I'm glad I became the person I am today. I just want to say it again. I fucking knew it, dude. I knew this guy was alive. So yeah, they used the power of friendship to save Kaneki. Julio. Look, this is cute and all that the story's wrapping up and it's telling us what each character is up to. But all these text boxes are kind of pissing me off. Like there's a better way to just tell me how everyone is doing. I feel like that's, it's a little lazy. So as I'm experiencing the final bits of Tokyo Ghoul, I realized something and I'm really annoyed at myself for just realizing it now. Oh my God, I'm so fucking stupid. Didn't he, they say that Kaneki touches his chin whenever he's lying dude i freaking forgot about that until now we're on volume 16 this is the last one i'm so stupid that was like the one thing i knew i was supposed to look out for so on my own time i'm gonna be going back and looking for those moments god damn it dude we got the good ending that's it that's it we have finished the final volume i'm gonna post a follow-up video not just talking about tokyo ghoul re but the entire series in general so stay tuned for that go watch some of my other videos and subscribe that was pretty good but i want my one piece back